Welcome back, everybody. You're currently watching our latest edition of the Quake Pro League and our next match, Effortless versus Dewey. I think this is a real opportunity for both players, to be honest. Uh, Dewey, unfortunately, you know, he's, I've, he's, I've always been a big fan of watching Dewey play, but it's a shame to see that he's not quite had the same kind of path of success that we're used to. Uh, this is a chance for him to kind of get a win on the board. Effortless, always hungry to improve all the same. So you could definitely say the same for him in that this is another great opportunity for him to get some points on the board and see how this one goes, Flea. Yeah, indeed, neither of these players has so far managed to secure themselves a win during this stage, so they got off to a pretty rocky start, but we know that they've got great potential and that they're capable of great things. Now, if you look back at their history, last time these two played against each other was actually back at the Stage 1 Finals, and it was Dewey who secured himself the win in a 2-1 victory, but it was an extremely close game. In typical Dewey fashion, it came down to one frag of a difference in the final map of the series, which suits his play style perfect. But the play style is something that across the stages, you know, I would say the weeks, it has been stages at this point when it comes to Dewey, there has been a rather significant development in his game, I think, where he is becoming a bit more multi-layered. You know, I think one of the biggest critiques you could give Dewey uh, when he kind of made his Pro League debut was that he was a little bit one-dimensional. Uh, his play style was very much his style and there was no straying away from it. Uh, Dewey has kind of said multiple times since then that back then it was very much, I think, just a sign of him finding his feet in time limit duel and kind of coming out of that very short-lived kind of competitive retirement for about a year or so where he wasn't competing. It took him a while to kind of get back into the flow and now he is there, he is a little bit more, you know, multi-layered as I said before. Effortless though is a player that I think is very much can be said uh, in a similar way because he is a player that he's kind of like less talk and he's more just knuckle down, put his head in the game and he's just always looking to get that big result that he's been gunning for for a really long time. I think he's more motivated now um, than he has been in a while, but I just we're still waiting to see that kind of massive result from him, I think. Yeah, well, today, either one of these players is guaranteed to get their first win of this stage. It's also very interesting that they are tied exactly for seventh place with the exact yeah. same amount of earnings during stage two of this season of the Quake Pro League. So one is no doubt going to shoot up through the ranks, whereas the other one might be ending up in a bad situation. Yeah, a 3-0 either side will be most welcome, I'm sure of it. Now we'll take a look at the picks and bans. We can see what the journey will be throughout the course of this set. The first map is Corrupted Keep, Molten Falls, and then Awoken. Champion-wise, again, I mean, we're kind of seeing nothing really too against the grain. We have that Galena and Strog scale bearer from Dewey, which does fit his style nicely, and the Molten Falls. The one thing is, I think we see a Doom Slayer on Molten Falls, not a crazy common pick on that map. Uh, and then it's yeah. Awoken with the Anarchy for Effortless and the Nyx, finally. Long time no see. Haven't seen Anarchy on Awoken in quite a while. It feels like you are right. Doomslayer, not a common pick on Molten Falls, just because there's not that many areas where you can really make use of that double jump, right? Of course, you've got the heavy where you can jump across the bounce pad, essentially. But other than that, the map really doesn't have that many avenues to make use of that passive ability. Other than that, I don't think anything really stands out. Nyx is a very common pick on Awoken. If we look at Corrupted Keep, Galena versus Strock, very common there as well. So uh, don't really see any clear, obvious advantage to either one of these players. Seem like very standard and relatively balanced picks as well. Yeah, not only is Nyx a common pick on that map, I think Nyx is a rather common pick for Dewey as well. And it really goes back into that Dewey style of play. And again, for those that you know, maybe this is your first time tuning into a quick pro league, Dewey style of play is historically a lot slow paced and very very defensive and that was at the very beginning at least and he can still very much apply that style to his game plan he doesn't do it every single map now there is definitely matches where you know my guy just brawls you know he goes out it, it's a very like combat heavy map <laughs> um, and Dewey's able to, to match that as well because when we started to see Dewey play in duel a long time ago back when it was round based and not time limit based he was like one of the most I think unique players to watch because he was quite aggressive in fact and you know you would find certain picks of his just absolute just go in you know at the start of a round whether it was his ranger whether it was oh god what other picks did he play back then I'm sure he played clutch back in the day it's been a long time since I've seen it 
Um, but I know Ranger is what we what we definitely, definitely, definitely recognised with him the most back in the day. The Dewey Orb was a, a famous yeah. term coined back when the orb was a bit better, to be fair. But that was a long time ago is the point I'm making. It's actually very interesting to see that it was Dewey who banned Ranger of this series, right? There was his first ban right off the bat saying, I don't want to play this champion against Effortless or I don't want him to use Ranger against me. And that probably has a lot to do with, as you said yourself, right? The Ranger orb used to be a one hit kill if it connected regardless of your opponent's stack. Has of course been brought in line with what the other champion's abilities are like a bit more. Thank goodness indeed. I think that Dewey still longs for the days that he could just cross map people with with that ability, but no doubt that he is going to put on a show with Galena as well as we are loading into the first map of this series, Corrupted Keep. Corrupted Keep is how, however many times we've said it, this map is all about just, it can be the biggest snowball map ever, but no other map plays like it. The weapons are different and the flow of it really is different, I think. So we always say what happens on Corrupted Keep stays on Corrupted <laughs> Keep. So quite an interesting first map. So kind of get both players warmed up at the very least. And the Galena is going to give a little bit more, I think, fortification, putting those totems up on things like, you know, LG, for example, which makes the teleporter a bit of a risk. In other instances, just having that health on tap when there's already so many health bubbles on Corrupted Keep in the first place. Galena's passive, where if she picks up health, cooldown is reduced. It's, uh, I think it's a good pick, actually, for Dewey. And I think it's yeah. going to give him a nice foundation versus the ferocity, I think, of the Strog going into map one. Indeed, Strog is going to be difficult to counter. Very common pick on this map simply because there is no railgun, meaning that taking down that peeker is a lot more difficult than what you might imagine. Kicking things off though, on Effortless's point of view, very aggressive as you predicted yourself, catch up. Heavy machine gun use from Dewey is sublime though. Very clever play, but Effortless closes the gap. Good rocket into LG. And that is a very quick lead, Dewey has to rely on the heavy nail gun, won't be able to find the damage and Effortless immediately stacking on a bunch of frags. Ooh. A massive push in right as this item is going to spawn up here with another the current 2-1 situation. And we've already had three frags in less than a minute. I mean, you know, when people say that Corrupted Keep is a different beast, this is pretty much why. Not a huge amount of damage from that machine gun, unfortunately, for Dewey. And although, in theory, he was kind of in position for this Mega, it's very, very early indeed. But the Tribal is so good, and he survives! Survives! And he tries to optimize, get those health bubbles first. Oh, oh! no! <laughs> oh, Flea! He tried to optimize so it, hard. It's always a risk, you know, you leave it up. If it works, it's brilliant. If it doesn't, then it backfires tremendously. So much long-range rocket damage from both of these players. Effortless has got the better stack. He will be the first one to push in, steal away the heavy as well, and is now just extending his leap. I am loving the pressure that's coming out from Effortless right now. It's like he just wants to take a piece of Dewey. The moment he spawns, he goes at it. But with it now being a sizable lead for Effortless, but in such a short space of time, looking for the midair, but not quite able to land it. Gets one, but the... A little bit too eager of a chase through the jump pad there, Flea. That was easy pickings for Effortless. Trying to refrag. Oh, no! Knocked into the lava and the totem to go with it. What has happened? Seven frags in two minutes? It's a good thing there's no 20 frag limit in the Quake Pro League, or we might just see Effortless hit it momentarily as well. Dewey, he has to stabilize. There is still time, Ooh. and his way of stabilizing is through raw aggression and brute force as he rushes his opponent with the shotgun. Now both players setting up for heavy effortless. That was a questionable decision going for the peeker right there, leaving himself defenseless in playing view, and Dewey securing himself a frag off the backside of that. Now there is, as we've said, so much of this map left that although it seems kind of ridiculous that Effortless has got eight frags already, this is still a great opportunity for Dewey to turn things around. The danger he is going to have, though, is that significant stack disadvantage, especially now. He's going to pick up that light armor, but now where do you go from here? You're either going to zig or zag, and Effortless making the perfect call out as to where you're going to go. I mean, that was really, you go up and maybe survive, or you go down and definitely die. Effortless just dedicated to the right direction. Effortless is LG is also looking sublime oh, right now. Say no more. Tracking. Oh my goodness, Dewey showing up for the Mega a little early. 
this should be a frag for the little robots. And he even takes down <laughs> Come on, what is going oh on here? Goodness. This is yeah, looking like gotten... a new man today. What's gotten into effortless? He's playing well right now, Ketchup. Timing is on point as well. Never early on the item, always there just as it spawns. Gets the scout out, good rocket there from Dewey. But that is one small victory of many he's going to need to win this map. Things have fallen away from him so quickly, Dewey! Trying to get really as much damage as he can there. I think if he knows if death is guaranteed, I may as well just get a point blank rocket. It's not going to get any higher than that. Seven frags of elite for Effortless right now. Looks like he will be giving up the heavy though. Dewey. It's going to give him some breathing room right there, but he's still lacking the lightning gun. Effortless. Is he going to try and deny that weapon? Looks like he's a little late to do that. We'll secure Mega instead. Dewey now trapped in a pretty bad spot, but he's got some stack to work with, so he should be able to escape. Good LG once again from Effortless, but the rockets in defense work out in Dewey's favor. And Dewey has to be very careful here. You know, he's starting to put right back into the stack that you really need in this situation, especially with just how much sh how much damage really Effortless has been able to get out there. That reaches a point when your opponent hits so many shots, you're like, right, I need to prioritize absolute stack advantage, because if I don't, I'm probably not even going to outgun this guy. 45% LG accuracy after doing nearly 2,000 damage with it too. Effortless really landing a lot of those shots, sending Dewey sky high. That might put him in a bad oh, spot, but the LG, the tracking on point. Effortless, looking sublime, but Dewey, hang on, plus forward, aggression, Dewey, as you mentioned yourself, Ketchup, really, a much more balanced player right now, can swing both ways, but Effortless right there to rival the aggression once more. I mean, that death that he took near Heavy, Dewey, he missed a, a rather significant super shotgun blast, that's why he went down one HP, die hard indeed. Unfortunately, not quite able to take the heavy in time, so he is going to have to back up. And on a map as small as this, the split second you take to turn around and pick up an item that you missed is enough for the opponent to get in position. Speaking of, though, there was enough of a delay between the Mega and the Heavy that he was still able to push forward, but the perfect call-out from Effortless <laughs> already having the LG ready to go. That was perfect play. Effortless, not just bringing the aim to the table, but also really clever strategic decision-making. Dewey not ready for that at all. <laughs> Out comes the peeker. Dewey waiting. Did you, uh, yeah, how about I say, did you see that gauntlet? <laughs> yeah, that, that does not work on the robot catch-up. Not one bit. Effortless is having some of the best. This is some of the best kind of effortless, at least aim-wise, that I've seen in some time. I have to admit, and this is a great start. If he's able to keep this aim alone, what is this LG effortless? Come on, mate, calm down. 46% accuracy, over 3,000 damage done. Effortless pining for that 20 frag game. Has Effortless ever gotten a 20 frag game in the Quake Pro League before? He wants it today. Oh. <laughs> They both have the same idea, yeah. looking for the surprise super shotgun. I mean, it has to be said though as well, up until that frag that took place, Effortless had the same damage with LG alone, almost equalizing Dewey's damage total. Oh my god, what is this LG today? He's not able to survive though, goes down. Now Dewey's still weak though, the armor gets taken, but you need to get some health bubbles. Thankfully on Corrupted Keep, plenty of them around, but... As much as good frags as Dewey's able to land, it's just that Effortless has given himself such a divide. The rocket, no trade. Mega spawning at just the right time there. I think Dewey would have dropped the frag if it didn't, but of course oh, calculated God. that rocket to the face and another one on the drop down. Dewey gets a pretty good spawn, though Heavy is over on his side, but he's lacking weapons, doesn't have rockets, doesn't have LG, and Effortless knows this, wants to bully him some more. Is it even going to let him pick up that health? Hang on, though, Super Shotgun, pretty strong, and it will be a trade. Will it'll, of course, oh, favor what a spawn. Effortless. What a spawn. Yeah. He spawns right near Mega, and because Dewey died with a Super Shotgun, Effortless had the perfect weapon to basically put the fear in Dewey to say, nah, you're not jumping down here, mate. Unless you want this point blank, mate. 
And this has been a miracle game so far for Everless. He's done so much right, and his decisions on where do he's going to retreat, and there it will be 20 frags. 30 frags in eight minutes, by the way. Corrupted keep, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God, here comes another one. Right as Mega Spawns as well. An absolute snowball of a map. We mentioned it before we even got into the game. Effortless building so much momentum, and if you're Dewey right now, you're already starting to think about the next map in the series. This one's over and done, you've got to put it past you. And these players at the highest level, they of course are capable of doing that. He's got to keep his head cool, his mind in the game. And already start considering how he is going to counter an Effortless hitting this much LG. Lovely rocket to start things off. No armor there for Dewey, though, so even though he's in position, he has to be very careful himself, and just like that, Effortless pins him to the wall. Says, see you later. I would very much like this first map, please. Dewey, just... I mean, at this point, really any frag that happens is whatever. You know, the map is finished, there's nothing you can do to change the outcome. And Dewey's gonna probably just pile in to try and get any frag that he can at this point, just to keep that muscle memory high, stay warmed up. Is he even going to get a frag, though? Because if you end this map with Effortless, 24 frags! Working on 25 at this rate. If you're Effortless, he's even pushing through with the Gauntlet. Gauntlet versus Gauntlet, and it oh! will be Effortless. <laughs> Getting what is probably the final kill of this game. Dewey rises to the challenge. What? And it will be one more for effortless goodness gracious catch up i don't think effortless has ever gone anywhere near this kind of a score line the man is looking absolutely rejuvenated right now i mean that was 26 to 12 yeah that was that's a kind of matchup in quake pro league that you actually rarely see even on corrupted keep to be honest uh, the fact that we had so many frags in general speaks volumes for just how significant this map can be but it's got to be said in the early points it almost looks like effortless was so on fire with that lg that it kind of caught dewey off guard and it took a while to adjust to it because effortless's decision making even the small little things right where dewey spawns near heavy effortless knows that he's gonna have super shotgun he waits for the chase and pushes in he waits a split second before he uses the lg pushes you away so that even though all you've got is the super shotgun you're not in a range to make it actually do anything at all small little optimizations like that really gave effortless i think one of if not his most i mean this is the most dominant game he's had in quick pro league surely i can't think of any other time he's had this yeah. much of a result and that was only map one for crying out loud now we might heat up in the molten falls that might very well be a different story, right? We know that Dewey is a very resilient player, can absolutely just reset moving into map two, effortless. On the other hand, though, is much more of an emotional player, right? That means that if things go poorly, it's very likely to affect his gameplay, but when they go well, he can really thrive, and you can see what he's capable of when he hits those shots. I also love just how confident he was from the very start of the map, right? Very often on Molten, or on Molten, on Corrupted Keep Catch-Up, you see a relatively slow-paced game for the first few minutes, right? So players, yes, they're getting, they're exchanging some frags, but no one's really running away with the scoreline. And then in the last segment of the game, all of a sudden it just spikes. This was nothing like that. Effortless from the first 10 seconds was on Dewey's case with that LG. Extremely oppressive. Going to be interesting to see if he can carry that on into Molten Falls as well. So, you know, it's interesting that you do say that Effortless has historically been a bit more of a kind of like, um, the, the gameplay is definitely, I think, dictated by the emotions, um, especially in the middle of a map. But I do personally think that Effortless is, is, is definitely step by step getting a bit better at kind of controlling that. Uh, I think that he's gone into the stage and everything else with a, a bit more focus and I think maybe even discipline in regards to that. And I, I love to see that reflected in the gameplay where uh, it's some of the most impressive stuff that we've seen from him, not only in season two of Pro League, but dare I say like all of Quake Champions perhaps, because he's been around playing this game for a long time. But it's going to be a significantly different matchup, even on paper, because we have Doom Slayer, which is not a common pick here on Molten Falls. However, there's the theory that maybe it gives the Doom Slayer a bit of an option against the scale bearer you know because i do know that doom slayer's double jump can be a little bit of a kind of last minute strategy at getting around that bull rush which in this map can often put you in a guaranteed checkmate situation 
We'll see how this one goes as we're checking things out from Ephelus's point of view first. And the Doomslayer, we'll see what makes it tick on this map, I suppose. Effortless, starting over on the heavy side of the map. Those rails are going to be crucial. Those rockets, hang oh, on! Wow. One, two, three to the face and down goes Dewey straight off the bat with more aggression. Actually, that was really sick. About it, that was that sick. He canceled the bull rush to bait yeah. the double jump and then set up a guaranteed shotgun blast. That was sick. I mean, these are some next level plays, right? Dewey, big scale, effortless says, okay, I'll double jump straight over you if I pick the Doom Slayer, and then Dewey's like, no, 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 I know exactly what you're going to do, and I'm going to stop just in time to whip out the shoddy and finish you off. This is some very high-level Quake gameplay. I mean, back where I come from, we call that match-up knowledge, my friend. You know yeah. that someone's you know someone's picked a champion, or I guess in some cases, character, uh, and you know why they've done it. So you already have the kind of counterplay already prepared as someone like Dewey, who no doubt has played a fair bit of Quake Champions in his time. Doomslayer, even in general matchmaking, is actually a very popular character, uh, especially in things like TDM, Free For Alls. And that's a common strategy. You know, if I'm playing Doomslayer and I see a scale bearer, I want to double jump. Oh, 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 LG, but without Dewey, he's taking a ton of damage in the meantime. If that angle had been slightly different on the LG, Effortless would have fallen off the map. Double jump, the Olay. Dewey drops one more frag. Effortless's rockets have been absolutely sublime so far. Hasn't even used the LG once. Effortless! Finally, using the lightning gun a bit. You can't hit 46% oh, LG come on. on map one and then just not use it for two minutes. Finally, Effortless making use of his star weapon from earlier. The combo kill. Coming through hot. The rail just to finish. Taking a lot of damage though. So at the very least, he will shut down this heavy. Even if Effortless drops here, I think the important thing... Wait, no, Dewey's not even going to challenge. He's going to put himself in position for that Mega instead. Not a bad play at all there from Effortless, because if he's able to get that heavy, now he knows that Dewey's not going to have it. He's not going to be as healthy as the drop down towards this Mega commences. And honestly, all things considered, Effortless, one good rail or so, unreturned, kind of like that. And he's already given himself a much better situation. Dewey's going to go through the teleporter anyway. Big risk to take, because now, as the heavy spawns, Effortless has the perfect timing. Opts to cut him off to the teleporter first, misses the rail, and he can't quite get the ball rush. He's going to spawn with nothing. He's got the ball rush gone for at least 40 seconds, unless he can pick up some hourglasses. Thankfully, there's a couple there but what a play from effortless there flee effortless doing so much damage once again do we all he's got is the rockets that won't help you and your opponent can jump and fly all over you effortless really hitting his shots once again scale bearer big man big stag but also a big hitbox and effortless is abusing that just look at that lg glued to his opponent effortless 90 percent railgun ketchup has only missed one shot out of 10. This is sick. Absolute mayhem. You know, we said in map one, if he's able to keep playing like this throughout the rest of the set, then we'd be very worried for Dewey. And right now it's looking likely. The bull rush is available, but Dewey doesn't want to have to spend it. Thankfully able to get a frag without, but no armor. And speaking of the beginning of the end, maybe for another life here of Dewey, picks up two health bubbles, but still not a lot of armor around at all. Watch out for the rail. That would have been a kill shot. Oh, the berserk. <laughs> You love to see it. Doesn't happen all that often that we get to see some Berserk punch kills. Oh! <laughs> Just a moment too soon. Effortless. Dropping another frag. Still five points in the lead. Dewey, how do you approach this? The rails, the rockets, everything is so good on Effortless's end. Dewey just can't make a move. Getting a bad spawn here as well. Hang on. Effortless whiffing. One too many shots right there. And now Dewey. Can he set something up? No effortless controlling the center area of the map. Reading his opponent perfectly once more with the LG. To block him from picking up the Mega. Now that opening rail alone is going to give somewhat of an opportunity here for Dewey. But effortless. He's got what he wanted. Out of LG ammo though actually. So this fight might be a little bit different. Got some rockets, got the super shotgun. That's going to be, at the very least, I think, enough to challenge this heavy. If Dewey wants to push forward. Oh, and he makes the right call. The Berserk again! Two frags! You rarely see one Berserk frag in a duel, let alone two of them. 
five frags in the lead for Effortless. Mega is spawning, do we? Can he get onto it? Doesn't even need to. That starting stack that you get as a heavy champion is going to work wonders. How are we seeing the same thing three times already? Effortless dies on Mega. Dewey picks up Mega. Effortless spawns Rail and then punishes Dewey when he takes the predictable route through the teleporter. This has happened three times already. The Dewey immediately loses any sort of benefit he got from securing the major item. And Dewey kind of doing Effortless a favor with that frag too, where Effortless secures the frag fresh off spawn with the rail. The rail was the only weapon he had. He dies, drops the LG, and now Effortless can use the LG to stop Dewey from going up the jump pad. Surely Dewey must have known he had the LG because he dropped it. No shotgun for you, sir. There's another frag come through for Effortless just in time for the heavy to spawn. And I mean, man, Dewey, he's been having a rough road in, in this stage anyway, but Effortless, it's a combination of just Effortless having this wonderful momentum and just playing out of his mind. The rail comes out again, Flea. Effortless, is he gonna get two 20 frag games in the same series? Oh my God, it might, it might actually happen. Dewey, of course hell-bent on not letting that happen. Effortless is just playing phenomenally right now. The shots are so good and I feel like Dewey, oh, it no. almost seems... Three berserks! Oh, wow! It almost feels like Dewey is kind of playing this on autopilot right now, catch up. He oh just, yeah, for sure. Just the way that he's maneuvering throughout the map, he's opening up so many angles. It's giving Effortless so many opportunities to deal damage time and time again. I think that Dewey is just, strategically speaking, not approaching this the right way. Like, again, Effortless is just waiting for Dewey to carelessly jump around the corner and then eat a rail. It's just the tone of this map. Yeah, and the fact that Effortless is basically finding Dewey so easily every time. <laughs> the ball rush! Dewey couldn't see him! Able to pick up the frag anyway, but uh, I mean, it really does need to be said that Dewey, he's just going for what seems like the really obvious approach every single time. I wonder if he's a little bit mentally checked out from what's going on so far. He picks up that armor, but really, who cares? Effortless. He's in a better position for this heavy, and if Dewey wants to take it, he's going to put himself at massive risk. Misses the rail, and that missed rail is going to allow two 100 damage rockets, and we're three frags away from Effortless getting his second 20 what? frag map. What is going on, just Flea? Just look at Effortless's reaction. He can't even believe what's happening. I mentioned this at the beginning of the map. His rockets, they're uh -oh. like homing missiles. Hundreds after hundred damage coming on through time and time again. Effortless, he just, he's incredulous. He can't even accept that he's doing this kind of damage right now. And he knows that Dewey's not going to go for the heavy in that situation. He was just dedicated to it. Dewey's weak. He's not going to risk it. Less than two minutes to go for Effortless to maybe get this extra frag on the board. Dewey hitting that rail, and the fact that when he's firing rails, he's not even moving. This is very unusual. Effortless, he's getting some really easy shots here, because Dewey just, he lands the rail, and he's just standing still. Ah! Oh. Um. Okay. Um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not, that not just quite happened. Sure. That was unfortunate. It's not going to help the morale for the final map. Dewey, once again, has to already consider what's going to happen after this one. Effortless. He wants that last frag. You know it. 19 is beautiful. 20 is even better. This has been a really difficult matchup for Dewey so far. Now, Effortless, I don't want to say he's going to be gunning for that frag, but I think he'd like two 20 frag maps. And the opening takes place, Dewey. Trying to stay nice and safe here, but I mean, look, the damage has been done. This will be another decisive victory here for Effortless in a 2 0 at least, setting up the tone for what could be another dominant third map. Who knows? But this has been a combination, I think, of Effortless playing out of his mind, honestly. But at the same time, there's definitely been some kind of um, frustration, perhaps, from Dewey looking for the double berserk. <laughs> That's. <laughs> that is the classic answer. Yeah, the Gauntlet and Berserk don't really get on very well, it has to be said. Effortless, this is his final shot at landing that 20 bomb. Oh my and lord. indeed he will with seconds left to spare. Effortless will be the victor of this series, although there is still one more map to go through. He is going to be feeling very good about himself. 
Oh, effortless. 7.3 thousand damage. 81% railgun. What are we seeing? 81% out of 32 shots fired, too. He was using that a fair amount. I don't even know what I'm watching right now. Effortless is just absolutely on point. Yes, Dewey gave him a lot of opportunities, but the man has been oppressively strong when it comes to the damage output. It's been a strong showing all round here. You know, we said that this is two players that are very, very, very similar, pretty much identical on the total earnings. That has certainly changed now, and it could change even more significantly still. Ah, oh, that was... Watching that from... Uh... <laughs> watching that from Dewey's point of view, I think that was actually better watching it through Effortless's point of view. And uh, that was one of the weaknesses. Uh, Doomslayer, although he has that kind of slight lock-on effect, I guess, with Berserk, he does tend to get stuck on the map a lot. And that was yeah. uh, one of those examples. Now, the Battle of Two Lights is going to finish the tale here between Effortless and Dewey, as it's going to be Awoken for the final map, Nyx for Dewey, and then Anarchy for Effortless. Here's the concerns with how things are currently going, both with how Dewey is approaching, and I think the frustration seems to set in, perhaps. Uh, there is elements of autopilot here, fresh off the spawn. We're seeing, I mean, you even said, like, a repeat of the same three... The, the same thing happened on three different spawns. That yeah. has to be Dewey going a little bit autopilot in the first place. And Effortless playing really well. Now Dewey has Nyx, who is very high risk, high reward. I'm kind of, like, not particularly confident in... Dewey's chances. And that sounds really almost judgmental, but I'm nervous for him going into this map because of the Knicks. It's just that if Effortless can continue playing the way he has been, that Knicks deactive ability is going to be defensive only, right? Dewey will yeah. always use it to escape and he will just be on the back foot every single time because he won't be able to use that ability to steal an item, catch his opponent by surprise, play aggressively. It'll always be putting himself on the back foot. So I fully agree with you there. If Effortless can just maintain this stride that he's been having so far, this is a very risky pick for Dewey. That said though, I love the variety we seen in this matchup medium versus medium heavy versus heavy and now to top it off light versus light we just get every single possibility in this lineup and it's glorious to see but at the same time there's definitely an argument to be made that Everless has had fantastic champion choices i think against dewey as well even looking at this one let's say there's a fight close range the ghost walk gets used last minute. Maybe Dewey wanted to stick around and try and fight or surprise you. But now when you see the Knicks use ghost walk, Ephelus can just pop the injection to give himself that massive health boost anyway. So every time Dewey plays, and we know that when Dewey plays Quake Champions, he plays around champion abilities a lot more than I think a lot of players. And he was one of the first players that really relished those abilities as a core part of his game plan back in the day. But Effortless keeps playing champions that if you're going to go in with the ability as like a big part of it, his ability is kind of working against yours and he's playing better. Oh my God, we start things off with the 100 damage. There's the injection already popped. Just try and give Effortless a bit of a footing here. Oh, Dewey. Okay. I like how Dewey approached that, not just with the damage cell, but just very patiently sitting in that center area of the map and letting Effortless put himself down below in a bad spot before he just sprung the trap. And Dewey's got to be careful though, doesn't have an LG yet. He was eyeing the lightning gun that Effortless dropped earlier. I think it probably has disappeared by now, so he won't be able to pick that one up. Hanging on to that Ghost Hog for a very long time though. Looks like it is going to work in his favor. Dewey, you still don't have an LG! Did he not notice he didn't pick it up? Maybe he just figures he doesn't need it. But I would definitely recommend that he loop back around and pick it up sooner rather than later. Good but rails, though. Putting so much confidence in this rail alone. The injection forced out. Oh, narrowly gets that wall jump. I was a bit nervous for that one. As Ephelus has no armor to his name, the Battle of Lights is going to be the Battle of Light Armors for sure. Fighting over scraps, it can often be. And Ephelus picks up one. And he's going to have more health now going into this. Lovely rockets from Dewey, though. Clean. The confidence. The Dewey confidence. You would so expect him to just use the Ghost Walk right there, but instead he holds his ground and lands two beautiful rockets. Two frags up already. Good movement, too. Loving the little wall jumps he's using to get around the map quickly and cleanly. And he's finally got himself an LG as well. So Dewey, fully geared up when it comes to the weapons.
wonderful use of the rail so far for Dewey. It's been a star weapon for sure. And a lot of the injection use from Ephelus actually has been to try and survive in these encounters, but to no avail. That's Dewey. Playing this really strong position. There's been almost like no use of this ghost walk so far. Dewey hasn't needed it. Ephelus looking to push in with a rocket jump, but Dewey already creating the space, looking for a little bit of denial. And again, in a better position for this major item that's going to spawn. Eats a rail though, and two rails alone is going to make things really tricky. There's the super shotgun Ephelus with the right weapon and the right call out that Dewey would in fact jump down to try and take that item. Yeah, Dewey definitely made a bit of a mistake right there. I don't think he was expecting to take that second rail before he jumped across and then before he knew it, it was too late and he was sailing towards Effortless with little HP to work with. Giving his opponents a way back in, but Dewey actually hyper-aggressively right now. Doesn't have a railgun, doesn't need a railgun, loving the wall jump, but Effortless making good use of those rockets to tie it all right back up. Now Heavy, next major item to spawn. Both players going for it, Effortless will be the first. Dewey, he only has got rockets. Not in the right position to take this one. I do feel like Dewey's hanging on to that Ghost Hawk a bit too much, though. It's good to keep it for when you really need it, but he's only popped it once, it feels like, in three and a half minutes. And again, There's a rather significant situation, too, and a conversation to be had where if you're playing a champion that's very ability-focused and you don't use it all that often, you're essentially giving Effortless way more injections, too. Yeah, because he's going to just pick up all the hourglasses on the map, constantly give himself Yo. both health boost, speed boost, and I mean more max health, for crying out loud. That's going to give him a much bigger edge, I think, in the late game, because if he's getting a lot more injections than you're getting ghost walks, uh, he's going to be able to tank that one extra rail, maybe, or whatever. He had a shot right there, and it would have been a kill if he had landed it. Of course, he lands the next one after Effortless is already healed right back up. Dewey still looking mighty fine. Neither player has got armor at this point. Oh, Dewey. If he had missed that shot, might have been in dire straits. LG is looking good and Effortless will drop another frag. Dewey once again in the lead as we're approaching the halfway mark of this map. Much more of a back and forth this time though, less about Ephelus kind of just being on this reign of terror. And Dewey, in fact, the one in the lead. Now, just to rewind our conversation a little bit earlier today, you know, mentioning that these two players are pretty much dead even on the total earning the leaderboard, essentially. Oh, ready for the air control. Now there's the ghost walk. Sitting on the health bubble. Healthier than Ephelus, but he can't get out in time with the heavy in hand. Now he's taken it away from Dewey. The chance of a refrag has gone up because of taking it. But the rockets are so good from Dewey <laughs> and the rail. Okay, Dewey waking up a little bit, it seems. Absolutely. This is a completely different player. Hitting so many more of his shots, applying consistent pressure across the board. Four frags ahead already. Nice little trap there too. Effortless. The danger coming from above. Not ready for it. As Dewey secured himself a heavy. And as you were alluding to earlier, Ketchup, this is still a very important map. These players are so close in the rankings that yes, even though Effortless will take home the win for the entire series, getting just one map, that's a big difference for Dewey overall. Looking for the shotgun finish, and he will find it, as this is a wonderful opportunity for Dewey to bring us into uh, a 2-1 result, which, to be honest, with how those first two maps went, the fact that he's able to, especially right now, he's able to potentially get this map on the board, it's pretty much as, as much as he could ask for, I think, with, with what's really broken down today. I mean, I think this is something that we saw not too long ago as well, right? When it was Dewey, I believe, playing Saigip, right? A, he lost the first two maps badly. Again, 10 point, 9 point difference in scores on map 1 and 2 against Saigip. And then the final map, all of a sudden, Dewey just reverses it and beats Saigip. We're seeing the same thing now, even though it's far from over. It feels like Dewey, he just gets that second win at the very end when all is already lost and it would be great if he could pull on through for the entirety of a map with that kind of playstyle. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's unlike Dewey uh, to be what we would definitely, I think, call a slow burner, I suppose. Almost like a high top speed but low acceleration, you know, but we're talking about it as if it's over. This map definitely is not. 
As do is going to pick up another frag here on Effortless, but it's a small map, two lights. That snowball effect can still apply here, but a good rail. Is Effortless going to look to chase this one down? No, opting to stay on the safe side. Ooh. Surprise, Frost Plasma. Also good to see Dewey make greater use of that ability oh. of his. Oh, okay. That rocket still connecting. He's going to be happy with that one. But I think I'm the fact that see... Dewey's able to hit these kind of rockets against an anarchy with that air control, yeah. that's even more impressive. I'm just, I'm happy to see that Dewey's using that ability more often. In the first few minutes, even though we had the lead, there were so many situations where it almost went wrong and a few times it absolutely did. So it's good that he's using it much more frequently this time around. Now absolutely laying the foundations for what could be a comfortable map win. Nephilus is going to pick up that frag himself. He's going to get the injection too. So even though he's at death's door, give it a few seconds and that's going to swiftly turn back round. But Ephelus, there's the pop. Just in time for Mega. Ephelus's issue, the fact that Dewey spawns near a rail, doesn't want to pick it up himself, be too obvious. Oh, but the close range shotgun, that's going to shred through your complete lack of armor. Good rail as well. Yeah, right after that Mega was picked up, so it was burned off instantly. Dewey extending his leads. I think both players at this point, they know it's more or less over. Good use of the shoddy once more. We really know it catch up that super shotgun. It's just so powerful against Anarchy. For some reason, it melds the champion like no other weapon. Bam, there we go. <laughs> the point blank around the corner. Dewey, you can see a little bit of a smirk coming out right there. Excellent play indeed. I think that's the first time we've seen Dewey smile all set. Ooh. And he get, beats him to the Mega. He's got perfect timing of both items. This will be absolutely a done deal for the final map, which results in ultimately a 2-1 win for Effortless. And it has been crazy momentum. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Dewey's about to get a 20 frag game on Effortless now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope he manages. Effortless still getting a frag on the board. Dewey, he wants this. He wants the 2-0. Oh. Now comes the ghost fog, effortless. He heard it. He heard teleporter, gauntlet on gauntlet. Can he secure it? And indeed, he can. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to end the game. I think we've seen that happen several times now, right? That, that, that the map was ended on a gauntlet, of course, long after it had any weight on the outcome. Yeah. Well played by Dewey again. Second week in a row that we see him thrive in that final map after really dropping the ball in the first two. And it's really in these situations that you can see how promising of a player Dewey is. He is so skilled and talented, but then just often calmed, quiet, bring it to the scene until it's already too late. I feel like statistically that might have been one of the highest fragging series we've had in Pro League. If you add yeah. up how, across three maps, just how many frags were landed across all three of those maps, that is a rather significant amount, especially going into this final one, where all three maps ended up with one of the two players breaking 20 uh, and just keeping the momentum and the intensity high. I mean, when you have frags going that much, it's not much of a slow game. There's not a lot of defensive play going on here. This is just constantly meeting each other in the middle and able to find what you need to. But now, a 2-1 victory. So although, <laughs> although Dewey's <laughs> able to eventually you know, get that final map win that he needs. Because remember, every map counts in Pro yep. League. At least he was able to get this one because it could have been worse. I think a lot of people in chat are going to have lost a fair few channel points. I looked at the uh, the predictions beforehand and it was something like 600k for Effortless versus 50, 60k for Dewey. So uh, I think there's going to be a lot of happy people who bet in favor of the man from Texas. Well played, Dewey. Now, that was the end of our latest series. Our next matchup is going to be Nosfa versus Dramis. So that's a match that we've we've talked about constantly. And there was, I think for a while, a, a bit of a, a real rivalry that existed in the early stages of Pro League where they kind of constantly, you know, they always had like fun games. You know, there was Nosfa, Dramis, Saigib for sure. You know, the Saigib and the Nosfa legacy was great as well. But I mean, Let's just watch another chapter in the history book, I guess. We'll see how this one goes. We're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, Pro League will continue. Thanks for watching so far. We'll be back in a few minutes.